dance is a universal form of human expression that is not only visually pleasing but also highly complex and sophisticated. The origin of human dance goes back thousands of years to prehistoric ritual dances and has now flourished into a plethora of various styles and presentations. But what allows humans to execute these complex movements? How are we able to direct our body through space and synchronize our movements to a musical rhythm? How can we explain the dancing mind? First off, regarding more basic movements like simply extending your arm, we know that the posterior parietal cortex first translates visual stimuli into motor commands and sends this information to the premotor cortex, which decides to initiate action. Then, the primary motor cortex sends neural impulses down the spinal cord to innervate muscles and produce movement. Meanwhile, sensory organs in the muscles provide feedback of orientation back to the brain, which are then corrected and refined by the cerebellum. However, while this general process may explain more elementary basic actions, do more complex and synchronized activities like dance also use the same mechanism? To answer this question, the first neuroimaging study of dance movement was conducted in 2006 by Stephen Brown and Lawrence M. Parsons. In this study, 10 amateur tango dancers, 5 men and 5 women, performed tango steps on an inclined surface while their brain activity was measured using positron emission tomography, or PET scan. First, the subjects were asked to perform a basic tango step, pacing their movements to a musical beat. Then, the subjects simply flexed their legs to the beat. By subtracting the brain activity recorded by the flexing from that recorded by the actual dancing, the study was able to determine the precise brain areas responsible for generating specific spatial movement patterns. What remained after the subtraction was a region in the parietal lobe called the precuneus, which contains the kinesthetic map of the body and allows individuals to be aware of their body position in space. Next, the study used a similar method of subtracting brain activity to find the areas responsible for the synchronization of movement to music. This time, the study compared two scans in which subjects either danced to music or danced without music. By subtracting the brain activity recorded by dancing without music from that by dancing to music, what remained was the anterior vermis of the cerebellum. Indeed, the cerebellum acts as a neural metronome of sorts, using the broad range of sensory inputs it receives to synchronize movements to external stimuli. In addition, a subcortical structure called the medial geniculate nucleus, or MGN, seems to affect synchronization as well. The MGN communicates directly to the cerebellum without having to signal higher cortex areas. This explains how we can unconsciously tap our foot to a beat and not be aware of it. In summary, the precuneus in the parietal lobe is the main area responsible for spatial movement and orientation, while the anterior vermis and medial geniculate nucleus are the main areas responsible for the synchronization of movements to music. However, neurology affects not only the process of doing dance, but also the process of watching dance as well. A separate study investigated whether specific brain areas become active when people view dances they are already familiar with. The study took fMRI scans of ballet dancers, capoeira dancers, and non-dancers as they viewed silent video clips of either ballet or capoeira dance. The results showed that activity in the premotor cortex increased only if the subjects viewed dances they themselves could execute. This finding implies that the imitation circuits in our premotor cortex, consisting of mirror neurons, mentally rehearse what we see, a practice that enables us to learn new movements and skills. Furthermore, these imitation circuits and mirror neurons can facilitate motor rehabilitation as well. Recent studies have shown that weekly dance sessions can actually reduce the severity of motor disorders like Parkinson's disease and improve hand movement and mobility. This is likely due to the fact that observing and rehearsing a dance in turn improves one's rhythmic coordination and balance and increases brain plasticity. Thus, while dance itself may have existed since the prehistoric ages, the neural processes of dance, as well as the application of these mechanisms to various fields such as motor rehabilitation and mirror neurons, continues to be discovered into the 21st century.